Thank you guys for coming out here. Very much appreciated. Um, the Every Days is a project that I started in 2007. Um, and I am on my, let's see here. Um, oh, Madam Mass, let's close that. <laughs> I am on my, uh, I just got hacked. Um, I am on my 6,236th day here. Guys, give it up, 6,236. Oh, yeah. that, is, that is no small feat. Uh, <laughs> without missing a day. Uh, come close sometimes? I did come close that one time. Jimmy Fallon, you son of a bitch. <laughs> son of a goddamn bitch. So I've done this live uh, a number of times, sometimes at the studio, sometimes, honestly, all over the world. And a lot of times what I do is I'll like call on people and kind of like, what do you think we should do? What do you think we should do? Um, I'm not gonna do that today because I have a very specific idea of what I'd like to do. So I'm just gonna jump in. We've got 40 minutes here. I'm gonna like set a timer and we're gonna get this thing start to finish uh, done in 40 minutes um, and posted so that I can take the rest of the day off. Um, <laughs> and so you can kind of see how, this, how these pictures come together. The program that I use here is called Cinema 4D, and um, it's a program I've been using since the second day of the everydays, um, or the second, sorry, second year of the everydays. And it's basically a 3D program where I've got a bunch of different assets that I can pull in here to make many different things. So I've got a bunch of different animals here, a bunch of different um, types of buildings, a bunch of different, you know, all different things, electronics, um, plants, uh, people, a bunch of different, you know, sort of celebrities and characters. So I can immediately sort of, you know, pull in some of our favorite people. I don't know about maybe favorite people <laughs> anymore here. Um, Bit of a polarizing favorite. Yeah, it's maybe not, maybe our ex-favorite people. Um, and immediately sort of start putting together a scene. So today the scene we are gonna build starts with monkeys. Um, and I have done a little poll on um, shit coins and what shit coins that um, people wanted to see shilled and so we will get to that more towards the end here. Um, yeah. In terms of like your, your, your normal like daily process with the everydays, is there like a normal time of day that you tend to tackle them? Does it fit into a routine when, when you're not you know, stuck with, Jim, with Jimmy Fallon? <laughs> yeah, so normally they're done at night. Um, it's got to be posted by midnight and that's where I got in trouble with the Jimmy Fallon is I did it on the show and so I did it during the day but I wasn't gonna post it until after the show aired and so I posted it, unfortunately, after midnight. I forgot about it. And um, yeah, let's just say I was pretty pissed. <laughs> pretty, pretty pissed. Um, yeah. But normally I started at, say, 9 o'clock, something like that, and um, spend about two hours and then, uh, yeah, and then post it like, immediately. A lot of times I will do a, a version um, and post it to uh, Tumblr first in case my computer crashes. Um, and then I'll work right up until 11.59. So a lot of people will come and like, oh my gosh, you almost like missed it. It's like, no, I've got that, the backup version on. <laughs> You're like, I, not my first rodeo. Heap, I've been the doing garbage this heap years. that is Tumblr at this point. <laughs> I love that. Let's, let's also, I'd love to, I know we've talked about this, and I remember when, when I came to the Beeple Studios opening in South Carolina, it was really cool to see all of the everydays, you know, on the wall, and see some of those really early works as well, which almost seemed like, you know, kind of like, like test drawings, you know, and yep. like, like just kind of like trying different things out, the same way that like painters will paint still lifes to get to something, get better at different techniques. Like, tell us a little bit about what the everydays kind of started for you and how that, how that has evolved for you. 
Yeah, so it started out as drawing. I wanted to get better at drawing, so um, I had seen an illustrator out of the UK named Tom Judd who did a sketch a day, and I thought that was a really cool way to um, just kind of stick with something and get better at it. And so I thought, you know, I'll start out doing a sketch a day and sort of, you know, see where that goes. And after that first year, I had learned a ton um, about, you know, drawing and sort of different techniques. And I was still very, and still am very, very bad at drawing, but I had really gotten quite a bit better. Um, and so I thought, what if I could take that, um, that idea and apply it to this program and learn a 3D program, which, of which I knew uh, no programs prior to this, no like 3D programs, and had always wanted to learn one. And so I um, started doing a render every day after that first year of every days, and then you know, realized that this was a, a, a program that has many, many different, um, it's just very, uh, there's a lot of different elements to making a render. Right now, the, the element that I'm doing is very sort of sculptural in a way that I'm placing these objects and building out this scene. And then in a bit here, it's gonna get more like photography in that I'm going to suddenly place a camera in the scene. Well, there's a camera here you can see in the scene. Um, and then I'm gonna try and like set up a shot. And so over here on this side, you can see kind of the, the viewport where I'm building the scene. And then over here, this is the render um, that will show what the kind of like final image looks like. And the render I use is um, Octane. And so every time I move the camera, it immediately starts rendering it, which that alone when I started was not the case. And then when they came out with that, it was like, oh my God, this is fucking amazing. And so, yeah, the, the tools have, you know, increased quite a bit through that time. And now obviously with AI, that will be another pro part of this process at the end um, that has really kind of, you know, taken it up a notch, mm -hmm. even from, you know, where it was. Do you use AI in your creative process at all? Like in terms of ideating ideas or kind of like getting like, you know, kind of like a creative canvas? So I don't use it for that, but you'll see the way that I do use it. I don't, the, um, the sort of text to image tools um, for what I'm trying to do don't offer enough kind of granularity um, in terms of, I have an idea in my head of the image that I would like to make um, and so with the text to image tools, uh, it just comes out very kind of like, not random, but it's not as specific as I would like. And so I'll use this at the end of the, the kind of like process. It's a, it's a tool called Magnific and it's something that I've used for the last couple months and it is just, it's exactly, um, the tool that I've been looking for since the, all this AI stuff come, came out because as you can mm -hmm. see, it will take the image and just, without drastically changing it, make it look a lot better and a lot more kind of like higher fidelity and just add tiny details that would take a really long time. And so to me, it was just, it's made creating so fun and, and so creative and, um, yeah, it just is, is really, you know, just super. It, and I think it's, it's um, more how these tools will be used in the future. And I think with digital artists, there's a lot of, of in some capacities with, with a lot of commercial digital artists, there's a lot of fear of these tools and sort of people worrying that it's gonna take their job and, and you know, that they're not going to, to be needed and that's just not the case like these tools you're not going to stop them we're not going to legislate them away um but also they're not going to like take your job like we're still gonna they're just gonna allow you to do more mm. um and so to me that's really exciting and something that i, I think 
if people look at AI as a way to do more, they will be fine. If they look at it as a way to do less, they're fucked. Mm. Because it's not going to be a tool for people to do less. It's going to be a tool for people to do more. For sure. You know, one of the things we talk a lot about when we think about like integrating AI into the media space at Now Media and the like is this idea of like augmented intelligence. You know, it's like what what can we automate so that we can focus on the things that humans can uniquely do and only humans can do. And it's often like the more rote and routine things that we don't actually rather not be doing, you know? Yeah. So it's, is it similar in that regard for, for your process? A hundred percent. It's yeah. like there's certain things like right now, like for instance, this this tool um, will most likely, we'll see, it's, it's still a little bit of a crapshoot, but most likely it will be able to put um, hair, more convincing hair on these monkeys. Yeah. And so if these monkeys were to all have hair on their models, and again, this is getting very technical, um, it would, the scene would be kind of drastically slower. And so there's just certain things where you can have it be a bit sloppier and the AI will kind of um, just make it better. And it's, it's a little bit of a like, get out of jail free card. And so to me, that allows me to just kind of focus on the like interesting aspects of the picture without getting into kind of all of the sort of, you know, very technical kind of minutia around it, um, which just makes it more fun to, to create. Absolutely. You know, I know that, that you know, you've been doing the live every day is um, on a, a bigger scale than, than before since you opened the Beeple Studios, but, but the whole idea of doing live digital art is something you've been doing for quite some time. Um, maybe tell us a little bit about that backstory as to how you started doing that. And like, you know, I, I think one of the things I mentioned when I was introducing you, and I think it's really interesting, is that I think doing things like this help demystify a process that a lot of people don't have full insight into. A lot of people just see the end result of digital art. They don't understand how it's made because there isn't that live element. Um, so lo love to hear just, you know, how that's kind of developed for you. Sure, so this, the idea of doing my picture live developed basically out of laziness. Um, I was doing a lot of talks in sort of, I started doing talks at kind of design conferences. This is, again, prior to, to NFTs. Um, and I was doing talks about the everydays and I started that in like 2000, say 15. Mm -hmm. And after a few years of doing those talks, like, it was sort of like, okay, everybody's heard me fucking jaw about the everydays, like, but I didn't really have anything else to talk about. I was tired of hearing myself talk about the everydays, so I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna do the everyday live, then I don't have to prepare a new deck, and like, I don't have to talk, and I can just do my picture and show my picture. And I think what's interesting and, and different about this that I think maybe people don't fully kind of like appreciate or, or hasn't been talked about that much, I think, is the fact that these tools um, are very new in the scope of digital art. Mm. And they allow you to like, like everybody can see what I'm doing right now. I'm not like writing code where it's like, oh, I have no idea what the hell this code's gonna be like. You can see like, well, that's it's gonna be a picture of fucking monkeys standing around a rock. <laughs> um, and so you can see, like, as I'm making choices, like, exactly, you know, what the scene looks like. And, oh, okay, if I move the camera over here and, like, this or that, like, you would see exactly, you know, what it could be. Um, and so to me, that's new and I think interesting. And, like, just watching this for a few minutes, you can immediately see, like, oh, that's how he makes the pictures. Um, versus before, like, I don't think people have any idea how the fuck I make the pictures. Um, and this sort of like workflow and, and bringing in the, the kind of like tools and techniques of VFX, video games, TV, commercial digital art, I think is something that's new because most work or all work was generative yeah. in the beginning of digital art because there was no Photoshop, there was no Cinema 4D. If you wanted to make digital art, you had to write a program from scratch. And so that's actually kind of an older way of making digital art versus this new way 
being able to use the kind of most advanced sort of like tools to make art. Um, and this is, th these tools have always kind of like resonated with me in that um, I think they allow a set of, um, they allow some different aesthetics that were maybe not possible before. Mm. Um, and so that to me, I think is, is really exciting and um, has kind of an infinite amount of, you know, kind of different ways you can approach that. I love that. And, and I love how doing something like this also kind of like, kind of lowers that barrier to entry that exists in the sense of being able to like, show you what's possible, show you how to do this, show you that you, you can do this. And so I know that's something that you've also done throughout your career, even before this. Um, so many artists that I've met who have come into Web3 or NFTs talk about the tutorials that you would make and share, um, where like you would kind of walk through people through like how to do things in the space, how to create digital art. And that was something that you released for free. That was something that you put out there to just help people. Um, so it, you know, it, I'm curious like how that kind of ties into um, you know, everything you're doing now. So I wouldn't quite release tutorials. What I would do, because again, I'm a deeply lazy person, <laughs> is uh, I watched a lot of other people's tutorials, but what I would actually do is I would just release the project files after I was done with um, like short films and that. And I was always kind of a little surprised that more people didn't do that just because it kind of, you know, I, I saw a lot of interest and I think it brought a lot of kind of like visibility to my work. And so I would basically under kind of like a CCO zero release the project files for short films that I did or BJ loops or um, things like that. And so, um, yeah, to me it was kind of like I have already like rendered out the the thing, so why not now, um, you know, just like give it to people to like use and learn from? Because again, I learned from many different people's, um, you know, uh, um, tutorials that they gave out for free, and so this was a way of kind of being able to to kind of like give back to that community. And I and I came up through. Um, I went to school for computer science, not um, not art. So I came up through more of a uh, kind of like open source thing where people, you know, make stuff and share it. And so to me, being able to like share the project files was kind of a, you know, sort of like natural, easy thing. Yeah, absolutely. I know we've had some conversations about um, some of the parallels between, you know, I, I come from the dance music world, you know, prior to, uh, to all things Web3, and this idea that, like, for example, electronic music is one of these forms of music where the way in which it's performed is not always indicative of the way that it's created, right? Um, there's a lot that goes on in the studio that creates the track that then you see the person behind the turntables playing, right? And there's an element there with digital art as well. And I know that you, you actually, you know, you created visuals for, you know, electronic performances in the past. Um, and this idea of being, of, of digital art as performance, I know is something that, that um, you're really passionate about. And, and it's something that, that, that I know you're exploring. You know, the first uh, Beeple Studios opening, I remember, um, you know, it, it felt like a, like a concert, right? It felt like a performance, you know, there was like pounding music, all the visuals, all that. I'm curious, like, what is, what is your vision for like the, for the intersection of digital art creation and performance? Um, I think it is something that there are many different ways to perform digital art, and so I'm trying to see what are the different um, ways that people can do that. Because I think it's something, as these tools become more visual and more expressive, you will see more of. Okay, so here's the part where I asked for everybody on Twitter to shill their coins. <laughs> and so now we're gonna go through oh boy, and type out these coins, and hopefully I don't get Caitlyn Jenner here. <laughs> Epic is getting some, some nice placement okay, there. Shout out to Mando. <laughs> Shil Harambe. Okay, here's a rather 
So, does anybody else have any coins? What is it? Okay, wait, we're gonna get here. Let's get this. CST? Okay. <laughs> okay. Wait, first we get boost? Boost? G O O Goost? <laughs> e? Oh, goose. <laughs> it's always the simplest tickers, right? Okay, well, they, they, these are all weird things. You can't, okay, what else? Shasty? Okay, spell it out. I'm learning a lot of new meme coins at the moment, you know? S H H. I S T Y, okay. Turbo. <laughs> Your mom, okay, I've heard that one. Turboner, that's a good one. I heard a, I heard a very enthusiastic <laughs> Mog just a second ago. Mog? Gotta get okay. Mog. In there. <laughs> I gotta put. What well, we gotta? Bitcoin. <laughs> I saw some of those guys. <laughs> what? Okay, one at a time. <laughs> okay, what? Mexico. <laughs> Art? You know, there's, there's someone out here front running all of these, just okay? like <laughs> waiting for this to get posted, right? <laughs> Is there any easy ones? Whiff, I feel like we missed. Yeah, what we need to get Whiff ones? in there. Okay. Uh, we got Pepe, we got Pepe. Pepe, did I? Okay, we got Pepe. Maybe, maybe some of like the classics, like a little Doge, Shiba Inu, okay. you know? Okay, you guys decide on them. I can't, you have to come to some sort of consensus here. Oh, this bomb. Oh, DJN, I heard some DJN. DJN. Shout out to the Farcaster faithful. DJN, okay. Boom. Oh, H -M -M. yeah. HMM. HMM is a good one. What the fuck you is know? that? <laughs> HMM, that's. Okay, we got it. HMM. <laughs> Wait, okay, is this some <laughs> racist shit? Don't fucking tell me this fucking... No, no. Okay, what else? Artie's art? Okay, that's super long. That's a rune, right? So it has to be like 13 uh, characters, right? What's up, tap? <laughs> tap, okay. Okay, did somebody say Xbox? What is it? Ball cash, it's a nice classic there. A little throwback. Ball? A oh, bone? Bone? V-L-O-B. Blob. We should probably get bone on there, you know, for dark farms and all that. I got bone. Oh, I got, got bone. Okay. Shroom. Get our boy Trippy. Um, what else? Okay, which one? <laughs> okay, we've got a couple more. W here, we're just gonna make R I R I B T. Okay. W A A C. That actually helps what he's doing right there, oh, so smart. I can read that's it. Smart. Put it on your phone like that. If you can do that, I don't know what he's doing. It's like the new iPhone light. You that's know. the thing. W. What did you say? A P U. Okay. 
Oh, wow. She's, she's got a shirt. Okay, Moon. That's... Okay, that's easy. It's so long. It's going to break the thing. It's going to break the thing. What do you got? A short one. C I T. Okay, we got space for one more. One, one more. more. One this more. guy, what is it? I can't see it. You shit. You <laughs> shit. I think that's. I it think that's like a good, that feels like a fitting finale. Fitting finale, right? That feels like a good place to stop. Okay. Okay, guys, we're good on it. Okay, okay. We're good. We'll see. If we've got extra time, we can, like, how much time we got left here? Oh, I see. 14 minutes. Oh, 14 minutes? We got a shit. He's saying you have MAGA twice in the. I have MAGA twice, twice in, the, in the second half. Okay, yeah. fine. We've got time for one, one more. more. One more. Okay, XRD. <laughs> XRD. Okay. There it is. There it is. There, okay, here. The obelisk is finalized. There it is. So let's do this. So so now kind of the uh, what? One more. Well, I'll draw some at the end. I'll draw some on at the end. Um, so now the process becomes more sort of um, kind of painterly in a way, mm. in that I'm now, obviously, as you can see, kind of painting in details. This seemed like it was going to be a little hard to read those, so we definitely want to make sure these quality projects um, <laughs> all get their time in the sun just here. Meme sure these are know. all very just super solid investments that you guys have got here. Very <laughs> super, super smart. We were having an interesting chat about meme coins actually before before we came up here about you know how they how it is like this interesting combination of like digital art and this financial element. Um, maybe if you, I'd love if you share your thoughts there because I found them really interesting. Yeah, I think it is um, something where there is really this convergence of it feels weirdly um, like cutting edge to me. Um, because it's this convergence of art and sort of um, social media and financialization, hyper-financialization that I think is really new and, you know, didn't exist before. And so I think the idea, too, of memes and just ideas spreading very quickly Ideas that are unvetted spreading very quickly is something that I think will be very prevalent in the future. Because as our communication gets faster and more nuanced, you're seeing ideas, both good and maybe not so good, um, spreading. Questionable. <laughs> maybe a little questionable. Um, spreading very quickly. And I think that is going to be something that. Um, again, like, is a big, could be a potentially really big issue in the future. Mm. Um, maybe not so good. So we shall see. Um, so now what I'm doing is saving a slightly lower res version of this so that I can um, take it to this uh, AI upscaler, like I had talked about. Oh, yeah. To make it look, throw a little magic AI sauce on it. Um, and so this is the kind of way that I do that. So this is the program, Magnific. So you can see here, like, this was the render from last night. This is what I fed in. So basically getting the, the image mostly done, and then you can see the like detail that it wow. adds to this. So you look at this mouse, and then look at this like right here. You can just see it just like looks like way better. More nuanced, and it, yeah. More nuanced, but it also puts in weird shit. So then I just like erase out the weird shit in my like, um, I have the other version as kind of the like backup, and I can kind of like composite them together. 
So basically I'm gonna take this and say, the prompt is, so now I'm feeding in the image and say a group of monkeys standing around a giant rock. So this isn't some like crazy, you know, sort of, um, you know, super complicated prompt here. And this is all of the settings of the program. And so usually I'll kind of try a few different sort of like settings here. Um, if this actually is going to upload know how good our Wi-Fi is. Uh-oh. <laughs> might be. This might be not a thing. Are we on? Can somebody create a nice hotspot for me with bandwidth? <laughs> <laughs> um, you need a hotspot, you know. I can, I can fire it up. <laughs> yeah, see if you can, maybe. I Let's don't see. know if this is going to actually work. It's uploading. Usually it's pretty quick. It's not that big of an image either. Um... Yes, that is pretty slow. Fuck, we got nine minutes here. Um, My personal hotspot's okay, up and running if, uh, if, if, it'll, if it'll okay. be of aid here, so. Wait, what is the thing here? Don't hack his phone. <laughs> Should be uh, Matt Medved's iPhone if, it's, if it shows up. Yep, there I we go. I do see Matt Medved's iPhone. Yep. Okay. Matt bot 85 is Okay, the don't do it. Don't jump on it. <laughs> oh god, now everyone's going to join. Jump on me now. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Okay, there All we right. go. All right. Let's see. Let me see if this actually goes a little faster now. Maybe. Otherwise, we might have to use the on AI version. Uh, uh, maybe. Uh, okay. Uh, might be actually working now. I'll try it again. If you wipe out, you know, my, my year's worth of data, it's fine, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but this is, is a, uh, when it works, a, a way that really kind of saves a lot of time mm. um, and just adding little details. Oh, looks like it should be working here. Um, that many times would take, you know, a, a bunch of time here. So what was the other one you guys wanted me to add? We'll add another. These are the <laughs> red-headed stepchild ones that we just wrote on. What is it? I A M A. I. I A. M A. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a community celebrating somewhere in a <laughs> in a Discord okay. not too far away, right? <laughs> So here, okay, this did some, like you can see here how it changed the image. Oh, wow. Um, and so basically then we can kind of take this and mix these two together. So now we've got the Magnific version and we've got the um, other version and we can basically place them on top of each other. Oh, wow and then basically take this, like this, group this. And then the parts where it's like weird, where it's kind of like, okay, um, obviously this head is a little weird here in the back. <laughs> so then we could just erase that and then it's just like, worst case, it's the original render, you right. know what I mean? And so it's like anything where it's kind of like, okay, this is a little too much here. Like You get the best wise. of both worlds there. Yeah, yeah, you just get the like best of both worlds where it's like, ah, I didn't really like that there. That put some like kind of weird stuff. And so to me, using AI like this, where it's like, it's pretty much the same image. You know what I mean? It also, it ch did change Bitcoin. <laughs> so, snroom, Bloss, so, maybe this, I should keep it like this, and everybody will be like, what the fuck are these? Someone is like rushing to pump fun right <laughs> Look now. Look at this, you k know, like, k here, dude, what the Bitcoin. fuck? <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, we'll erase these. We'll get the like right ones in there. Um, One thing we've we've chatted about before is kind of like um, with your everydays, how you like capture kind of like the spirit of the day or like the zeitgeist of of whatever's like kind of capturing the community's attention. Um, you know, when I've when people have asked me kind of about about your art, one way that I help to explain it to people is I'm like, you know. Beeple is a political cartoonist for internet culture in the sense that like each day like you're channeling what is happening you're taking the day's events what are people talking about what's like bouncing around crypto twitter and bringing that together um, to kind of like immortalize a moment out of it um, curious just like how, how do you kind of think about your process for selecting the um, the subject matter for your for every days yeah it's um, to me there's no <laughs> no shortage of crazy inspiration in the crypto universe um and so i think it's it's interesting to be able to use these very powerful tools to comment on things in we'll keep that other butt um in more of a kind of real-time way um, and so that's always been something that, or not always, because the everydays were not like this. In the beginning, they were much more sort of, uh, much more abstract. And as the tools became more, um, sort of nuanced and powerful and things like, Turbo Squid that has, you know, I didn't make that that 3D model of that monkey. I didn't make any of these textures. I didn't make any of these plant materials, these plant um, 3D models. And so as these tools became more, um, more powerful, I was able to sort of like change and, and kind of adapt with different workflows that allowed me to work sort of much quicker and be able to comment on things that had happened, you know, sometimes just hours earlier. Um, and so this is another thing that I usually run a lot of the everydays through. As you can see, it kind of like adds a sort of sketchy look to everything. Um, and so I kind of add that on top just to sort of soften things out a bit. It looks like we've got a couple minutes here. Um, yeah, so this is looking Pretty, <laughs> pretty interesting. It's coming together. It's coming together. <laughs> it's, it's coming, coming together. together. <laughs> I would say there's a class action lawsuit probably coming together from. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that is also interesting. I know we've talked about this before, but like. You know, when you think about the impact of these everydays, like they have moved markets before, right? They have caused like coins to pump and things like that. And I know that there have been sometimes like some people have criticized you for, you know, covering certain events, you know, the Ben Dot Eats saga comes to mind and things like that. You know, and, and how do you kind of feel about like the role of the everyday uh, in terms of kind of like capturing the zeitgeist? Yeah, to me, like, I'm sorry, if you are taking any of these things as being, like, endorsements of this crap, you are, you are not going to make it, as they <laughs> say. You are not going to make it. Like, this is, like, in no way, I don't even know what the fuck any of this shit is, like, and so the idea, like, I don't, I don't make any of these. We got room for one more. We got one minute left. One Anybody more, else? one got more. One more shib. We, we didn't, that feels like one. What do we got here? Goose to goo? Five oh, we've got five minutes? Okay. Okay, okay. okay well, that's actually Excellent. a lot longer. That's too long, even. It's too long. Okay. <laughs> what else we got? Well, we'll just put goo on here. Oh, I got goo already? Goose to God? Wait, somebody wanted goose, I feel like. I feel like you're just... Wait, you want this to goo? <laughs> <laughs> I changed it. And we got goo here. Okay, what else? I, I see, I see else? bets. I see uh, catnip. Okay. I feel like one other thing we need to do here to make this Ethereum, that's an interesting one. <laughs> I've heard of that before. What? Use it. 
Okay. What? What's it? Use it? Oh, it's oh. the bottom one there. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be pretty hard. We'll just cross it out. <laughs> I feel like this would not be complete unless we put a Nakamigo in it. <laughs> um, so we'll see who can get this Nakamigo real quick. Whoever just floored their Nakamigo right is about click, to be uh, <laughs> immortalized on this one. The, um, Romanaki's in. What else? Anything else we should add to this? Goblin. Goblin. What is it? Gummy. Gummy? Did you say goblin, maybe? Uh, I'm gonna add some birds. <laughs> <laughs> I know we got the, the Nakamigo, obviously. Are there any other like Easter eggs or like consistent kind of memes or like quirky things you add to them? Or? So it's changed over time. Yeah. Like I used to add a bunch of like um, uh, people who've been following for a while. I used to add a bunch of um, what the fuck is it? Hot pockets. Hot pockets. Hot pockets. I kind of had this thing where I was like, what if I was like an anti-influencer and basically I put a bunch of terrible things in the everydays. <laughs> and tried to get Hot Pockets to pay me not to put them in the like thing. <laughs> Basically, like I was like the mafia. Creating brand liabilities left and right. <laughs> and so then I would put Hot Pockets in like all kinds, the Hot Pockets logo in like terrible, like fucking just disgusting fucking every days. Um, yeah. I also always, this is not really an Easter egg, but something that I put on all of them. I put this um, dust texture, this exact dust texture mm -hmm. on almost every, like every day, at the, the very last thing that I do. Just so like I'm, a consistent layer and like a feel. It's like a, this yeah. consistent sort of like, um, yeah. Did they get it? Was it you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Was it you? No. <laughs> okay. Um, I think we are about there. Are there any? Um, I know. I think, I think we've chatted about this before too. But are, are there any like specific everydays that really stand out for you? Like ones that you think represent either like your best work or also just like captured a moment really well? Um. There's a couple here and there. There's also a lot of butt trash in there. <laughs> um, okay, what should we call it? <laughs> Shitcoin what? It said obelisk, I think I heard. Shitcoin obelisk, okay, anything else? I've got an idea, unless you guys can come up with something better. We are so back. We're so back. Rest in shit. Rest in shit. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What's in the bag? Um, shit. <laughs> Doesn't seem super, uh, super thing. Okay, all those ideas suck. Okay. Based humanity. There it is. Another oh, day done. Give it up. Good to go. <laughs> NFC. Yeah. I'll go back and take it. <laughs> Good. I think I think we did it. There it is. Everyone, awesome. give it up for people. I appreciate it.